So the Jeep's behind me again and it's in pieces, obviously. Now we literally just got back from vacation and it was really nice. We went away for about a week and a bit. A lot of things kind of came back to bite me. If you remember in previous episodes, I made like a hard line that came off the bottom of the turbo drain. It cracked, it started leaking really badly, fortunately on the way home. And in the meantime, I thought I'm gonna do a full service of the vehicle and get it ready for winter. So I've done the viscous fan, did the oil filter, done an oil change, done a coolant flush, I've done a fuel filter, along with changing various hoses and just inspecting stuff and everything. And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll do the crankshaft seal at the front of the engine because it was dripping a little bit. Now that I've changed it, it started leaking really badly. So top tip, if it isn't leaking, don't touch it. There's also one more issue I've got to fix on the three link kit, but before then I need to just get the whole front end off. It's just super irritating really, because I've just reassembled all of this and you know, I literally just fully OCD'd it. Now it's got to come apart again. It's making me feel happy. There we go. Don't bend, don't break. Can you imagine that if it just broke clean off? That's happened. On the old stink elbow. Oh no. Unfortunately, the radiator and the intercooler have to come out again. Admit, I'd, ra I'd rather not be doing this. You can prob probably tell. I'm not having a lot of fun here. Um, but you know, we can talk about some stuff, right, while I'm doing it. You're probably not interested. Those of you who follow regularly have asked about the four litre and like what's going on with it. Um, you will see it again extremely soon, I promise you. Um, because uh, I've just, like I said, got a garage for it. Where I'm going to be doing all like the chopping and the, the, the sheet metal and all the work on it basically because I can't really do it here with what I've got planned. Um, so, you know, the point being is if I can drive somewhere, do some time on it while I've got it in one place, and I don't have to worry about how long a job takes. Now, the viscous fan. It's got to be removed and the cowl. By the way, for you diesel guys who are like, what cowl is that? Because obviously the diesel one has an intercooler box at the bottom and you might not want that if you put a front mounted one on. This is from the 2.5 petrol Cherokee and it fits the diesel perfectly. So there you go. There we go. <whistles> well, now we're getting closer to the offending part. And before I uh, get into that, I'm just going to show you something that you might want to know about your diesel engine, your VM. Um, so there are two different types of water pump and housing. Uh, one is bigger than the other and you might make a mistake. So on the later model, you get a 76 millimeter impeller and the housing is slightly different, 76 mil. And that fits great and there's no touching. If you have the older style VM um, or maybe even a different vehicle with this engine in, you'll have a 71 and it's much smaller and it will fit nicely into that housing. The thing is, if you buy a 76, it isn't obviously going to fit in the 71 mil housing. Look. And the reason being is because this piece here will not allow it. And in fact, all of it won't allow it. It's just the housing is totally different. But the problem is, is you can have a 76 mil housing on a newer Cherokee and you can buy a 71 mil pump and it will go straight on and you'll think, yeah, everything's great. But the reality is, is it's actually not because in there you want the pump to be as close as possible to that lip. So it's basically flowing the coolant as best as it can. So it needs to be as close as possible to there. It really should only just glance past it to actually allow the pump to work properly. It won't do that on a 71 because you've got way like a much bigger gap in there 
and you'll end up with poor coolant flow and potentially it could lead to it overheating in high load situations. So you want to check that because you can see the 76, I don't know whether you can see that, it just cuts real close and the better the pump housing, the newer it is, the better that machining face will be and the closer the tolerance will be. Rumour has it back in the old days they would put pig fat in the glycol to thicken it up to sort that problem out. Um, I heard a rumour that man fat was better. It's just a rumour but you know that there's usually truth in rumours, why is that not moving? Piece of shit my lord, piece of shit. There we go, it's off. I've actually got a new belt to put on as well, which we did do the first time round. Maybe, maybe I knew that this would happen again. So now I have to get this in the right timing position for top dead center so I can put a pin in the flywheel and get this nut off. I think it's gonna be somewhere there, I reckon. Let's check. Oh, look, there's the hole. Can you see it? The magic hole. We might be able to use this and just turn the flywheel. But we, ah! We all need a tool for pulling things off. It's just what we choose to go with. In my case, I'm using this. Some people might use something else. It's just kind of like the thing, really. It's like... Off comes that. And this is going to be a devastating shit mess. Yes, it is. Looking great. So as old Dinkus Von Crum went in, it ended up pushing the seal in an odd way. Well, with all the bolts out, which wasn't too difficult, um, and I actually managed to get that one out without removing the pump pulley, you need to try and get this timing cover off, and it is not... It's not a lot of fun, I'll be honest with you. It requires kind of a lot of screwing around and the timing cover will bend and you just have to bend it back. Just done an oil change on this vehicle and I'm not going to do another one. Um, there's a hole there and a hole there either side of the oil pump and that is where it goes into the sump so I would advise you block that up if you don't want to drain the oil like me or else all these pieces of crap are going to go in there and that's not good. Well, it looks like I'm dead in the water on this job. Um, obviously, I've taken the timing cover off, cleaned it all up. There it is. I even have a spare timing cover that I've just been testing here with what was a new seal once, but now it's like Svinky Monroe. But it's so badly beaten up that I, I just don't really feel good about putting this in. It's kind of one of those jobs where you really only want to be doing it once and doing it right. So I'm going to leave it and think about it and move on to my next job. This just arrived today, and uh, this is a poly bushing for the front. Now, I was gonna go to a spherical bearing, like you might see on the Iron Rock off-road kit, like a spherical misalignment bearing, but I'm kind of worried about noise transmitting into the cab, so I still wanna retain a little bit of deadening at the front. I think this is gonna be a lot better than those uh, bonded rubber bushings. This was very inexpensive and one of the reasons why I'm going to try it out before I bite the bullet and move to a spherical bearing. Hopefully I don't have to do that but the fun part now is getting the old one out and we all know how good that's going to be. Well hopefully you can see the fun that awaits me. I am not going to disconnect a damn thing to do this. I'm going to try and do it the laziest way possible which will make it the worst way possible. I could remove all of this and have nice clear space to work. I'm gonna basically take that bolt out, get that out, and I'm gonna use brute force from behind. When in doubt, 
brute force from behind. It's... Oh, fucking hate your eyes. It's moving, I think it's moving. Is it moving the wrong way? Yeah. This is actually what I'm going to use to control the tilt on the axle. Uh, a bottle jack with a kind of slight chamfer on the edge of it so it hooks in. And it's going to go underneath the stiff cover here. And that's going to allow me to stop the axle coming forward and it shouldn't actually go back because of the way the coils are. It's going to always want to push forward, <coughs> in my case. Let's see if I can just take some stress off that bolt and pull it out. Come on down. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's out. Oh, mate, now you, that ain't a good sign, by the way. That's not a good sign because it actually means that it's totally worn out from changing the bushing over many times, but I don't care, it's out. I actually pressed this one in too far. You can kind of see that there. Normally it should only run up to about there and there's a ridge, but I just bisoned it in with the old ball joint press and, and kind of ruined it. So this is the third one I've been through since I did the three link kit, because obviously that was an oversight of mine. Um, this is kind of what I'm saying. A lot of the problems that I have, I've brought upon myself for either cutting corners or not doing the job properly or not being able to afford to do the job properly. Oh, it's going in, not how I want it to. Okay, I think, I think that's it. That's it. Keep thinking I'm going to smash my teeth on the yoke. It's really not very nice, actually. It was a bit, a bit uncomfortable. I put the polyurethane stuff in. It wasn't that difficult to do. And now I'm just putting in the, the center pin. So that's in there now. Um, and it isn't perfect. You can kind of see where the polyurethane got sort of tattied up a bit. Um, I mean, although that bit's not being clamped, I have shaved it down with a, with a Stanley blade just there to make it look a bit better because it was a little bit dog-eared. But, uh, you know, it's clamped down nice and tight. I think it will work great. But the issue with these, with these control arm mounts, and this part here is actually part of the old rough stuff control arm, um, that I've welded onto a long arm. So it isn't technically um, something I thought too much about actually, but that should come out further and go round like that. That's really how a poly bushing should be clamped down, like the whole bushing should be evenly clamped. Because what's going to happen is as there is going to be slight movement in this, it's going to ear like cut that ear off there. Um, and then, you know, progressively the rest of the bushing could potentially fail. So uh, I'm going to leave it like that, but because it was such a cheap part, I'll buy another one. And then when push comes to shove, i.e. when the whole thing goes to shit, I will take the control arm off completely and extend it like that and plate it on the outside with a big round washer, weld it all the way around, and then the next bushing will be clamped completely. I can't be asked to do it now. So really another job that I should be doing is putting some triangulation on that arm, like kind of like that. So if you imagine I put a grinder down the middle of that and I put it onto that arm like that because this arm has bent several times now. It's probably because of the angle of the tie rod there um, or of the, of the link of the arm basically, of the link, push, pushing it up at an angle and bending it rather than it going completely up. That, that's the issue, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just something I'm probably not gonna do right now. And that's it really. Um, what the hell else can I do? Like, uh, I was gonna put that in, but I'm just not gonna risk it because I ordered a couple of new seals and I'd rather just 
put those on the better condition timing cover and have brand new seals in there. So that is not gonna happen. Um, you know, the thing is about that kind of job is, is you put that all back together and if it starts leak, it like it might not leak now, but let's say it leaks again in another two or three weeks time after I've done a few miles in it. It's just an absolute load of bullshit. So yeah, I'm kind of at a standstill really. It's the reason you, you probably haven't seen me for the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously one of those weeks I was away, the week directly after my last camp. And then, uh, you know, the, the weeks after I've just been screwing around with like sawing problems out. And it, and it like, I think the thing that pisses me off the most, the jobs I enjoy the least, let's say actually, is, is revisiting uh, jobs. And more often than not, it's my own error. There's, there's no doubt about it that the more you modify a vehicle and the further you take it away from what it originally was, and i.e. If you're, if you're building your own stuff and you lack the experience, those are the other bullet points on the end of there, which I, obviously, that's me, um, you kind of end up with problems further down the line because there are things you just don't factor in or, or you just don't know from lack of experience. So, um, you know, when I, when I built the three link and I didn't put a poly bushing on the front there, I just ran out of time and I thought, let's see how it goes with one of those rubber bonded bushings. I, can't, I don't even know where that bushing is anymore. I think I launched it somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, I wasn't surprised when it failed. And then it failed again and I had a couple of spare and I thought oh, I'll just swap it out. But really I should have just bought that um, that iron rock off-road misalignment bushing, the rebuildable one, had that at the front and then had a poly at the back. And um, that, that probably would have been a real sound way to go in terms of longevity. But you know, I am where I am with this and uh, I probably will just end up doing what I said I'd do with the front end on the control arm there. But in terms of the timing cover thing, that you're not gonna see that fixed in this video. Um, that arrives next Tuesday. Basically gonna fit that, get it fixed, and then the vehicle's up and running again. But I just recently did a, a Patreon thing, just kind of talking about the content that's coming up. And I know the reality is, is not a lot of people really give a shit, and why would you? You know, people have their lives to live, um, as do I. Um, but if you are curious about what's to come, in future videos, um, the four litre has begun. So I, I've actually started cutting and getting rid of all the old corrosion out the floor pans now, and that has commenced and I've begun filming it. So fairly soon, like let's say in a couple of videos time to be realistic, which is a couple of weeks in, in viewing world or the viewing time, um, you'll see the four litre. And the first video is really just me cutting out all the old metal. And then um, basically the following video after that will be me welding in and repairing all of that from the underneath and the top. And then most likely priming and painting the inside of the vehicle and then spraying and undercoating the underside of the vehicle so that the vehicle shell is essentially ready to then start working with. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna frame stiffen it, that four litre. Like the underneath of it is, is in great condition and, it, and the engine runs so nice. I started it the other day. We took it for a little spin, me and Max, and it was just like, I'm, I'm kind of a bit excited about it now. So I've actually got a load of parts in, in the workshop ready for it, like I said. So as soon as all that rust work's done, I can bring it in here and it will be kind of like in a bit of a better state to work with. So if you've been waiting for that, which I know some people have, um, it's due to come very soon. And then the work on that will be kind of kind of happening throughout the winter as the workshop content alongside the winter camping stuff, if you are interested, of course. Um, the other thing I've got is an e-locker, which is just there on the bench to go in the front axle of this vehicle, uh, which I'm pretty excited about, because if you remember on a lot of the winter excursions, it's pretty heavy on the front end. And one of the major problems I really had was shock load. I mean, I've been running that front end with 35s now for the last, let's say three and a half, four years. So it's done four winters, the down of 30 with 35s and, and bead locks and, uh, well, maybe three winters. And I've been pretty hard on it because obviously I've been running a chain on the front as well. And that kind of takes the weight of the front tire up to probably the equivalent of a 37, 
And the issue with chains is you get a lot of shock load. So as the tire spins, it hits one of the links, it stops, grips, spins again, where it's on rubber again, hits a link, stops. And you've got all that shock load going into that front axle and into the spider gears. And obviously it totaled the spy spider gears eventually alongside a U-joint on the end there. But in all fairness, it did pretty well lasting the three years that um, of, of crap that I put it through. So I think with a locker and being a bit more selective about what I'm doing, um, and you know maybe not just going ape shit on the throttle and like putting tons of torque through like the drivetrain and stuff, um, you know may, maybe it will survive because um, like the load is more constant instead of like good 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 like that. So uh, yeah, and the other thing is my MP231 has, has, has finally died. You know, that's been dying for the last three years. You know, you probably heard me complaining about noises and stuff from it, but I just kept running it like, an, like a total idiot. And now like the front end is sloppier than Samantha after a, after a winter season, let's say. You know, it's just the way it goes. And I, I've got to really get that sorted before the winter. But in terms of other content, like as of what I'm describing, my Cooper STT POR Maxes, I think they're called. I've borrowed a siping tool or like a tread groover, and really the smallest it can be set to is about a millimeter, which is probably bigger than siping, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So I'm gonna try and winterize those stupid tires that I bought free a few years ago and make them a little bit more capable of gripping snow because obviously you know that'll be where it will kind of favor itself when you're in those conditions that aren't sugar snow when you can actually pick up snow and snow is sticking to snow like let's say around minus five degrees c to minus seven degrees c when it's compactable um, so that should make the winter kind of interesting really especially given i'll be running a locker um, so you know, in terms of what's to come, there's some interesting content on the horizon. Obviously, I've got quite a few more camps to do, but I need this hunk of shite running first, and uh, it isn't. So, you know, I'm going to a catch-22, really. I've sort of been holding off doing content because um, I appreciate people have seen me work on this thing numerous times. Um, and this really, of what I've just done to it, excluding in this video, I mean prior to what you've seen in this video, was really just to be supposed to be me servicing the vehicle, coolant, filters, hoses, little things that I kind of didn't foresee, fixing a cracked turbo pipe, which apparently is was always going to happen, according to a mate of mine back home who's done a lot of this kind of work. Those corrugated drain pipes, he said, for the turbos are notorious for cracking. I didn't know that when I when I bought it, so you live and learn. So, um, you know, just fixing problems and yeah, they were all caused by me and servicing the vehicle. So I didn't really think it would be interesting content to film. I'm going to stop chatting shit and go in and have dinner and forget about all this until the parts arrive next week. I hope you're all well. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, appreciate you watching, appreciate your support. And um, I'll see you again very soon in another video. Sorry this video was so crap, but I mean, this is just, yeah, it's just the reality of it, really. I mean, you know, it just is, it's just the way it goes. So uh, yeah, take care. See you again soon, I'm sure. I hope.